For more than 300 years, the nation of the Philippines was colonized by Spain. Towards the end of the 1800s, the American troops came to free the country, but placed her under its government ruling. The Philippine Revolution took place soon after. In 1902, the Philippines received her independence. The largest city and center of trade became the melting pot of citizens from provinces near and far. Manila after the American occupation of the Philippines, densely populated, the citizens had poor living condition, lacking sanitation. Plagued with diseases and epidemics such as tuberculosis, cholera, and smallpox, to name a few. The early Methodist missionaries saw the condition and the suffering of the Filipinos as they went with their evangelization. The Filipinos were appealing to them for help. This missionaries recognized the urgent need. People can only hope and pray at that time. The Women's Foreign Missionary Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church soon sent a medical missionary. Dr. Rebecca Parrish arrived in Manila on November 16, 1906 from Logansport, Indiana. Dr. Parrish stayed at the ground floor of the Deaconess Training School in Santa Cruz, Manila. As she looked around the ground floor of the training school, Dr. Parrish saw a hole in the wall where some stones had been knocked out. Workmen were called in to break down the stone wall, and that hole opened up to two rooms, which later became her dispensary. This was called Dispensaria Betania. In January of 1907, two American missionary nurses by the name of Gertrude Dreisbach and Rose Dudley arrived to help in the work of Dr. Parrish. The dispensary soon spread out into three more small rooms, equipped with bamboo beds, cotton pillows, some condemned sheets, pillowcases and blankets, purchased from an army hospital. As the need grew, Three young Filipina elementary school graduates of the Deaconess Training School were accepted to help in the dispensary. These girls came in their white camisas, panuelos, and blue cotton skirts. The girls encountered problems and difficulties along the way as they helped out. Dr. Parrish and the two nurses recognized a great need for training by providing a more formal nursing education to these girls. Thus, the School of Nursing was born. Three young girls became the very first students. They were later joined in by three more. As the sick patient's need in the dispensary grew, the people behind the clinic knew that the hospital was badly needed. Meanwhile, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Philippine Secretary of the Foreign Missionary Society, Mrs. Bishop Joyce, had long realized the need even before Dr. Parrish's arrival in Manila. Mrs. Joyce approached Mr. Daniel S. B. Johnston, a prominent businessman in St. Paul, Minnesota, who was looking to build a memorial for his wife who passed away. Mrs. Joyce told him the great need for a hospital for Filipino women and children and asked him point blank to build it as a memorial for his wife to be named the Mary Johnston Hospital. Mr. Johnston wrote a check for $12,500 to start build the hospital. The site was chosen by a missionary doctor and nurse who often passed by the area. This site was at a sandy place by Manila Bay and located right at the heart of the densely populated community of Tondo, a poverty-stricken area of Manila. The Mary Johnson Hospital was then built and completed in 1908. The hospital building was a two-story stone-and-frame structure 
with a corrugated iron roof and it was well built. In it, 35 patients including babies could be accommodated. This small building also had to house the missionaries, nurse students, a surgery ward, and a dispensary. On February 25, 1911, disaster struck. The densely populated neighborhood around the hospital caught on fire. Evacuation was inevitable. The very sick patients were carried out of the building by bed towards the shallow bay waters. Tearful nurses carried armloads of babies to safety. Patients were scattered everywhere. The hospital was burned to black waste. Not too long after, the hospital was repaired and rebuilt, adding a third floor for student nurses' dormitory. This was made possible through emergency funds, fire insurance collection, and generous gifts from individuals. In four months, the hospital reopened for service. On that same year, the first six students graduated from the Mary Johnson Hospital School of Nursing. The early curriculum of the Mary Johnson School of Nursing was standardized and planned by the Philippine government, patterned after the nursing curricula in the United States. The textbooks were the same as those used in American nursing schools. Dr. Parrish added a Bible class in each of the three years of the nurses' course. By 1941, the hospital had grown large enough to accommodate 120 patients, 60 nurses and student nurses, unlimited numbers in the dispensary, and a milk station. At the outbreak of World War II, the Japanese army soon took over the land. The school, along with the other schools, suspended classes on December 8, 1941. But many students volunteered at state to help care for the sick and the wounded. During the liberation of Manila, the U.S. Armed Forces led the fight to free the city from the Japanese forces. Casualties were brought into the Mary Johnson Hospital. Medicine and food were scarce and the hospital staff seldom received their pay. Yet no one ever complained nor ceased to serve. The hospital was caught in the middle of gunfires, bombings, and raging house fires. On February 5, 1945, the hospital burned down to the ground. Everything was reduced to ashes. Fortunately, however, due to the heroic efforts and anticipation of the then hospital nursing service head and alumnus, Ms. Lebrada T. Havalera, all of the hospital's medical records were saved and transported to the neighboring city of Cavite before that tragic event. Students were transferred to other schools to continue their studies. These students were able to graduate. In 1947, the Mary Johnson School of Nursing reopened with higher requirements. Since there were no school or hospital facilities yet, classes were held at the former U. Wilson Hall in Tiparetta Street in Manila, and clinical experiences were done in other hospitals. After five long years of waiting, the United States of America once again came to its rescue and donated 1.2 million pesos for the construction of a bigger and much more efficient hospital. And on August 26, 1950, the new hospital building was inaugurated by the late President Elpidio Quirino. This newly built hospital became a general hospital. school and dormitory building structure was constructed behind the hospital and opened just about the same time as the hospital in 1950. In 1953, the Bureau of Private Schools authorized Mary Johnson Hospital School of Nursing to offer a four-year collegiate program affiliated with the Philippine Christian College. The first class of 13 was awarded Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. The nursing program continued to evolve. In 1958, the five-year collegiate program was started in compliance with the Bureau of Private Schools. Enhancing the nursing student educational experience, a new three-story building was built. This building housed bigger classrooms, the library, 
and the dining hall. This building was named in honor of Librada Tija Valera. A third floor expansion above the existing dormitory building was added to keep up with the growing student population. Eight years later, the fourth floor auditorium was built atop the Librada Tija Valera Hall for student body activities, performances, ceremonies, and conferences. June 1974, the Mary Johnson Hospital School of Nursing ceased to exist as an affiliated school and became the Department of Nursing of the Philippine Christian College. The School of Nursing had undergone the gradual evolution from the traditional hospital school into a collegiate school to keep abreast with the present trends of educating professional nurses. Philippine Christian College received its university status on October 6, 1976, during its 30th anniversary. The Mary Johnston School of Nursing henceforth changed its official name to Philippine Christian University Mary Johnston College of Nursing. Its traditions and ideals remain the same, yet are geared to meet the present needs of the ever-changing society.